multidisciplinary academic and research experience in digital signal processing telecommunications data acquisition systems wireless sensor network internet of things and image and video processing he is working to harness and integrate different technologies towards implementing smart systems to contribute to smart cities and real life applications his research activities are not limited to the national level within UK, united kingdom but internationally extended to many partner universities in various countries his research has produced over 50 research papers in addition to this research activities he is involved in several enterprise projects and consultancy activities for national and international companies since 2007 he has been leadingly involved in several externally funded projects on national european and international levels totaling more than 20 million euros dr Sumela, uh, dr suleiman's work has been recognized through several awards such as lord stafford award impact through innovation for designing and developing a smart monitoring and controlling system for diabetic people the awm ict excellence award best knowledge transfer project category for designing and developing electronic bladder electronic bladder diary and uhns clinical innovation award for designing and developing an online multimedia based training system for surgeons it's over to you sir participants might be eagerly waiting for your session now i request you to share your slide and start presenting it's our honor to have you sir thank you very much Uh, can you see the presentation now? Yeah, we can see, sir. You can see. Assalamu oh. uh, alaikum, everybody. Uh, today we will talk about uh, sensors and their applications. We will talk in all applications in general, uh, and at the same time, we will focus in mechanical applications. Uh, I will not introduce myself. Uh, our colleague really uh, men mentioned a lot of information about myself, but this is what we will try to cover today, starting from what is the sensors that tell different types of sensors and sensors applications. Uh, also, uh, during our session, we will try to know uh, how to select a sensor. uh based on its characteristics applications and the our need first point what is the sensor sensor it is a device it's a function to convert the energy from certain from one form to another form mainly mainly it is physical form to electrical signal <clears throat> and the uh, uh, as you see from the figure we have physical change Physic physical change could be mechanical change like movement like vibration or thermal temperature or magnetic or electrical optical any type of physical quantities can be measured or can be detected by sensor and i will receive it will generate output signal most of the time it is electrical signal <clears throat> just a quick overview of sensors uh, sensors uh, uh, i can use what how, when can i use sensor i can use sensor to measure position or presence or motion or vol velocity or displacement or temperature 
this main category is really, is, uh, we can go to subcategories, humidity, moisture, uh, acoustic sound and the vibration, chemical, flow, uh, force, load, torque, leak level, leak and the level, electrical and uh, magnetic fields, acceleration, uh, machine vision, because this is also something we want to focus on it. Sensor, we have, we will talk about it in future in future slides. Uh, sensors, are not only just this a small device can be camera. Camera is also considered as a sensor for us. Uh, we have sensor uh, already acquires. We use it to acquire data or to acquire information. But we have on the other side actuators. Actuators, it is like sensors, but most of the time converts the electrical signal to uh, uh, physical uh, quantity. For example, if I'm measuring the light level by LDR, light dependent resistor, or by photodiode, or any type of these uh, devices, I can use it to control light lamp. If I'm measuring the temperature, I can use it to control heater or fan. If I am reading uh, or acquiring information about force or pressure, I can use it for lifts and the jacks and the vibration electromagnetics. Position the same. I can use it to move motors, the solenoids or panel meter, uh, speed and sound the same. Then the point is sensor is the first part of, of my sensor, of my system to acquire data. Then I will process the data, and at the end, I, I will have decision. This decision, it will be uh, mainly go through actuator. <clears throat> but what, what is the need for sensors? If we are talking about sensors, many people looking into sensor as it is a small device, not very important in, in, in the system. But in reality, to design a system, we need to acquire information. Then to design what we call it now smart systems. We hear this in expression many times these days. A smart system, what is a smart system? And how can, how can we make our system take a smart decision? To be able to take a smart decision, then the smart system is the system can give me decision, a smart decision. I cannot give a smart decision without acquiring the required information. Then I need first to acquire the required information to be able to say I have a smart system or to be able to take a decision. Then first step, I need to acquire information. Acquire information, in this case, I will need to use sensors. Then sensors are very important to acquire required information. For example, if I want to increase or degree, decrease the temperature of the room, I will need to know first what is the current temperature to be able to switch on or switch off air conditioner. After acquiring this data, I need to process it. Then second step, it will be processing the data. Then acquiring the data, process it, then I will be able to take a decision. Uh, normally, just because we are talking about a smart system, in this system we have also two elements, and not uh, uh, they don't appear here, but you can see them. Uh, they are very important parts, the communication parts, and this, this communication parts. It is very important how this acquired data needs to move from unit to unit to data processing to decision and the making. All of these links. It is based on communication and there could be wireless communication or wired communication based on my application and based on the environment I'm involved in. Uh, and the uh, fifth element is the power requirement because not, not every time or not everywhere we will find this power. And I will show you a slide. This is slide already diagram by a Spanish company called Lipium and to show us the different types of or, uh, variety of uh, sensors, uh, or sorry, a variety of applications that needs using different types of sensors. 
For example, if you see in this screen, we have a huge amount of applications. We have a smart road, a smart lighting, water quality, uh, quality of uh, shipment conditions, uh, structure monitoring, uh, radiation. We have many, many uh, applications, different applications. Uh, so, uh, uh, to work, to, to be able to control and to monitor and to manage all of these applications, really we need a huge amount of sensors. <laughs> not only, I'm not talking only about number, but I am talking about a variety of types. For example, uh, to measure temperature, when I measure temperature for room temperature, it will be different to when I measure temperature for uh, car engine. Then I need to, to study uh, what is the different sensors that can be used for that. Uh, here I want to highlight something because it is very important and we need to deal with this with our students really. I'm, uh, uh, many students, they come to us telling us, I want to do project in artificial intelligence. I want to do project, in, I have a temperature sensor and the pressure sensor and I want to do project. I have Arduino kit and I want to make project. Uh, uh, really, I think this is the wrong start for a project. For a project, if I want to start a project, I need to start with application, as you see. And after determining, after selecting the right application, I will start to select the uh, right elements for the application. For example, I always divide all projects into two layers. First layer is application layer, and the second layer is technology layer. Unfortunately, most of our students, when they come to ask us about starting a final year project or master project or even PhD, research, telling us I want, to, I want to, to start with artificial intelligence. Then they are starting from the technology layer. Technology layer, what is the problem in this? The problem is, uh, in, 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 in technology, when I started with technology, I started with the solution. I did not start with the problem. I need first to, to start with the problem. Then to start with the problem, I ask my student always, I tell him, think about the area. You need to continue your life on it. Which area? You want to work in the area of energy management, of security, uh, safety, uh, health care, uh, mechanical application. Tell me first, what is the application? What is the area that you want to work on it? Then, Someone will come in security, someone will come in safety. Then I ask him to do a survey, and this survey, he will start to find the gaps or the main challenges in this area. And then he will select, he can select one of these challenges and the trying to sort it out or to solve it. For example, if we are saying, just example, I want to know uh, uh, to start a project about how to manage energy inside this building then this mainly energy, energy management. Then I ask him, okay, inside this building, we need to make survey where I spend my money. I spend my money in heating, air conditioning, lights, equipment. Then these physical quantities, I want to measure it. Then I want to measure light. I want to know what is the temperature. I want to, then at first step, I need to select the suitable sensor to be able to acquire this information. The sensor really, it is the first step and I believe it is one of the most important parts of the system. If I collect the wrong information, my decision, it will be wrong. Then I need to use the suitable, for example, temperature sensor, uh, photodiode sensor or light sensor, uh, suitable light sensor. And as we said, sensors could be traditional like pressure, humidity, temperature, uh, light, and so on, and also, can be advanced like video camera. The camera, the camera itself, it is a sensor. Then, now I, I use this sensor, I have other challenge. The output signal of this sensor, it needs processing and to be processing. Because 
many sensors, and you will see in next slides, they have uh, uh, different types of output. Some of them, the output is very weak, needs amplification. Output is analog. I want to convert the analog to digital to be able to process it by computer. Uh, output is not linear. I want to convert it to linear to be able to process it and so on. Then as we said before, the communication part, how can I transmit this data? I can transmit it through uh, wired communication, like fiber optic, like metal cable, or I can uh, use it Wi-Fi or wireless communication to send my data. Uh, each, each type of communication has advantage and disadvantage, but for, for my application, always I'll, I will find one of them is the best one to, uh, to transmit. Then after that, the platform at the end. What is the platform? I, will, I, want, to, I want to someone to monitor the, the energy consumption in the building in front of several screens. He can see it, then he will use Windows. Then I need to use suitable software for that or I can use a mobile phone, then security guy can work, can walk in the building while he's monitoring everything in his mobile phone. Then we have different types really of platforms, maybe mobile phone, maybe tablet, maybe uh, computer. It's just that we'll see some applications and uh, I, I prefer really to know how much, how much sensors are important in our life. This is this screen just to, to show you now is a challenge in car. Cars or vehicles in general, currently based 100, not 100, but we, sensor is very essential part. When cars started, we had very little number of sensors. Uh, when uh, car manufacturing started, we were using only sensor to know maybe petrol level and tank petrol level or maybe we can use it to know the temperature of the engine, maybe two sensors over the whole car. As you see now, we have a lot of, a lot of sensors, a lot of type of sensors and can be, because this screen you'll find a lot of uh, sensors, then we can put in some categories like uh, the GBS, like AC, uh, the air conditioner uh, sensor, video camera, uh, microphone, uh, uh, exhaust gas sensor and the even pressure sensor for uh, tires and so on. Then if you notice now our cars really uh, full, really it is filled with a lot of sensors. Everywhere sensor, even there is sensor under the seat and so on. Other example for also cars, I'm focusing on cars because it is considered a mechanical application. Always cars comes to us as, as a mechanical application we use sensors and here it is very important that uh, we will show you that we can the sensor can be used for different applications the same sensor like ultrasonic sensor here if we're talking ultrasonic sensor we use it to be to help in car part some cars coming and this system is fitted fitted on it and some cars we can buy this unit and attach it to our system and life, it is not easy like that because acoustic wave, when I transmit the acoustic waves and I receive the reflection, we have reflection from ground, we have reflections from other uh, uh, obstacles. But as you see, it can give me, and maybe all of us now using the cars and you can, you can notice that when I bark, it can give me indication how much I am close to the obstacle to avoid any problem. Also regarding the car park applications, we have different types of sensors. Here, for example, in the image on the left, uh, we are using the technology uh, with ZigBee communication. ZigBee communication, it is like Wi-Fi communication, but in summary, it is uh, better in the point of using less power, then does not need a lot of power. Then in car park compared to Wi-Fi, but also the disadvantage has low bandwidth, but in many applications, we don't need high bandwidth. Then you can see here that we have uh, in, in each car park slot, we can put a node and this node includes the sensor and the communication unit and they can detect the presence of car. 
or vacant, then if the car in the, its place, I can send this information to nearest access unit, and then it will go to central place. Uh, also here, as an example for multi-story uh, car park, maybe this technique will not be suitable, then I am using a different type of sensor to detect the car. And here, we need to be careful about selecting the sensor to be suitable for our environment. For example, if my country is dusty, I cannot use this type of sensors to be fitted in the ground because it will be covered by mud. Then I, this sensor will not be functioning. But maybe this one, it will be much better. Or maybe I can use camera. And the many applications we can see that uh, I am personally involved in project uh, to trying to, uh, I am going now to city center and instead of going around the city center for 20 minutes to find the place to park, you know, I have application on my phone and I can book my place and I can pay for it and I can book for this time to that time and so on. Then before I leave, uh, my place, I will know exactly that I have a uh, place to park my car there. And as you see, this unit mainly it is uh, contains communication, sensing first, uh, communication unit, and a battery. And this other challenge is uh, uh, battery life. Battery life is big challenge, and for this reason, we will see now how can we select the sensors? Some sensors, they need a lot of power. Some sensors, they need little power or no power at all. Uh, and this is very important for our application. Different type of sensors. Uh, here, how to detect a car. Here, I'm detecting a car by putting under the ground. I put like coil and this coil, or we call it ground loop can detect a huge metal bulky uh, units when it passes in over it. <clears throat> Other applications also for ultrasonic uh, sensors here, how to open the boot of the car without touching it. If my hands are busy, I can put my leg under uh, the sensor, then sensor will detect uh, my, my foot uh, and then will open the, the, the boot. Normally, it will not open for anyone because I have uh, uh, my key and my key communicating with the car at the, at the same time. For autonomous car, I will surprise you how many sensors in the autonomous car. See this image, guys. In this image, we'll see all of these types of sensors just to, to, uh, 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 to make our car autonomous to be driverless car. We have long range radar. I need to see from distance, LiDAR. We have camera. We have short to medium range and we have ultrasound and the most of the time ultrasound used for parking. So you can see now how many sensor we have in uh, just for one application uh, to make our car autonomous. Uh, I will not run this video now. I will leave it to the end if we have uh, time for it because it is about five minutes, but it is comedy uh, comedy uh, shot uh, about sensors. Uh, here we can see the variety type of sensors if I want to go to smart home, if I want to build a, if I want to build a system to monitor my building or home. Then you can see at least the 17 type of, 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 of different uh, application inside the home means they need different, uh, different type of sensors. And all of this now, don't forget, all of this now uh, give us very big opportunity to exchange the data through cloud. Then I can set, for example, in England and I can monitor my home in India or like one of my students who is working in project uh, from India, Indian student, and he, uh, his project it was to put a monitoring system for his car. Then he can park his car in England, go to visit his, uh, his family in India, 
And while he is in India, he knows everything about his car. And if someone trying to steal it, even he can call police and so on. And this is, it was final year project and the successful final year project. Sensors in something very simple like our mobile phone. As you see in our mobile phone, we have a huge amount of sensors. This is a small piece about uh, uh, five centimeter by uh, five centimeters by uh, 10 centimeters contains an average between 14 and 15 different type of sensors. And when we talk about sensor guys, many people, they think the sensors, they do the process, whole process. No, sensor is its only part. Uh, acquiring this, the, the required information. Then we need pre-processing, processing, and so on until I will, until I make this information uh, useful and to be able to use it. Let us see, see this video very quickly about different type of sensors and their application. I will leave you with this video for four minutes. Types of sensor, different types of sensor, classification of sensor. Hi, everybody. Today I will share about types of sensor. This video you learned following about types of sensor. Sensors are classified based on the nature of quantity they measure. Following are the types of sensors with few examples. One, acoustic and sound sensors. A sensor is used to measure sense and environment and converts this information into a digital or analog data signal that can be interpreted by a computer or observer. An acoustic wave sensor is an electronic device that can measure sound levels. For example, microphone, hydrophone. Two, automotive sensors. Automotive Sensor is one of the largest sensor companies in the world, with innovative sensor solutions that help customers transform concepts into smart, connected creations. For example, speedometer, radar gun, speedometer, fuel ratio meter. 3. Chemical Sensors A chemical sensor is a device that transforms chemical information composition, presence of a particular element or ion, concentration, chemical activity, partial pressure into an analytically useful signal. For example, pH sensor, sensors to detect presences of different gases or liquids. Four, electric and magnetic sensors. Magnetic sensors differ from most other detectors in that they do not directly measure the physical property of interest. For example, galvanometer pulse sensor measures flux density, metal detector. Five, environmental sensors. Environmental sensors include barometric pressure sensors as well as integrated environmental sensors. These integrated sensors combine barometric air pressure, humidity, ambient air temperature sensing functions as well as air quality measuring. For example, rain gauge, snow gauge, moisture sensor. 6. Optical sensors. Optical sensors are electronic detectors that convert light, or a change in light, into an electronic signal. They are used in many industrial and consumer applications. For example, photo dial, photo transistor, wave front sensor. 7. Mechanical sensors. Mechanical sensors are used for positioning and limit switch tasks on machine tools and presses, flexible production centers, robots, assembly and conveying equipment, and in machine and plant construction. For decades, they have proven their worth as the traditional strongman of automation. For example, strain gauge, potential meter measures displacement. 8. Thermal and temperature sensors. The thermal response of a temperature sensor is the speed at which it responds to a sudden change in temperature. Thermal response time is the time taken for the sensor to react to this change in temperature. For example, calorimeter, thermocouple, thermostat, Gordon gauge. 
9. Proximity and Presences Sensors A proximity or presences sensor is the one which is able to detect the presences of nearby objects without any physical contact. They usually emit electromagnetic radiations and detect the changes in reflected signal of any. For example, Doppler radar, motion detector. Thanks for watching my tutorial videos. More videos, please subscribe my channel Learning Engineering. Uh, this channel in uh, YouTube called the Learning Engineering really they have very useful uh, materials if you can uh, see it. Uh, we, there are a lot of useful materials in this channel. What I like about this video in four minutes exactly, it covers almost all categories of sensors based on application and the nature and so on. Uh, next slide we'll talk about physical principles of sensing. How can I detect or detect the physical quantities. How can I measure the physical quantities? I can measure it based on charge of field or capacitant, uh, capacitance or thermal properties or heat transfer or resistance or induction, or magnetism. We have different types of ways to detect uh, uh, the physical change. In addition to detecting the physical change, uh, this, this, it is very important to know the, how to detect the uh, physical change. Because, for example, if I'm using a magnetism, uh, sensor based in magnetism in an area uh, full of electromagnetic fields can affect my readings, then I need the principle of, to know the principle of work of each sensor before selecting the sensor to work with it. Then, First thing, how 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 the sensor works? So how the, what is the internal construction of sensor? What is the main characteristics of sensors? It is they are very important to know them before selecting the sensor. Also the output signal from the sensor. Output signal. It is very important. I want to measure temperature now. What is the output? Voltage. It will be a change in voltage or a change in current or a change in resistance. It makes a difference. For example, if thermocouple a change of voltage, this will give me a change of voltage, but the advantage the sensor will does not need battery or power source, then it will change the output voltage. But the RTD it change in resistance, I need to use power source to detect the resistance change. Uh, pressure sensor, we have also a change in resistance or voltage based on strain gauge and piezoelectric. Acceler acceleration, we have based on capacitance. Uh, flow, based on uh, output signal, it will be voltage or voltage or current. Uh, position, the output it will be AC voltage. And light intensity, like photodiodes, a change will be current. It is very really important to know the form of the output signal. Then I will be able to process it. I will be able to integrate it to uh, my system. Uh, this just a, 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 a summary or a summary for uh, sensing physical property and the sensing principles for each property. This is an example for different types of sensors. Uh, really, I'm going, going very fast. I want to give you a lot of information in short time, but in future, I will be happy. To, to, to work with you to maybe to focus on certain type of sensors, like for example, optical sensors and so on. Here you can see different type of sensor. If I want to measure uh, temperature, for example, as we said, we have thermocouple and we have uh, uh, RTD. Which one I will use? It is based on the range, based on many characteristics. We will see it in the next slide. Heat sensor, infrared sensor, uh, touch sensor, uh, PIR motion detection, PIR or motion detection, rain sensors, uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, soil moisture. Then for almost for each uh, physical, uh, uh, for each physical quantity in our real life application, we can find the sensor suitable sensor to be used here. Okay. If you are talking about sensors classification, 
I can classify sensor based on different characteristics like uh, power, like physical property and the sensing principles, like technology, sensing steps and output signal. It is based on my application. Then maybe in my application, I will use sensor in place. It is very hard to find the power source. Then power is very, power is very important point for me here. It is critical point. I will not have source of power. I will put the sensor in middle of nowhere in desert or in uh, jungle or forest or some stuff like that. It is hard to find source of power there. Then we have two types, active and the passive sensors. Active sensors, uh, uh, we call it modulating. Uh, it is modulating as a signal. And the, unfortunately, this type needs external power source. Then this type of sensors needs its external power source to work. Passive, no, there is no need to uh, for external power source because like photo cell or photo uh, or thermocouple, uh, we, we convert the temperature to electrical current. Then uh, in, in passive, uh, it is self-generating. It, it, it is generating the, the electrical signal itself. This first type of classification is that if my application power is important for it, then I will select, base, I will classify sensors based on passive or active, and I will select the right one of them. Active, for example, like these sensors in the left hand side, we have source of light, and this light will hit the uh, surface, and then I will have reflected signal, and the sensor will detect it. The source of light and or infrared light or all of this part, it will be one package. We call it sensor. Uh, but in the right hand side, you see the sun is source of light and my sensor detect only in this passive uh, sensor does not generate anything. Like also this application, I have, if I want to scan uh, ground or something like that, I have type of sensor, it, I will send the signal to hit the ground and then it will go back again, sorry. Then it will go back again. Then here I need power for the sensor. But this sensor based on the reflected power coming from other source or other energy source. This is what we call it passive. Also, we can classify them in convention sen conventional sensors or MEMS or NEMS sensors. MEMS and the MEMS sensors, one of the main advantages of them, they are tiny sensors. They are very tiny. And the many times we need uh, small sensors like MEMS, we are using uh, them in car airbags and uh, we can use them to implement them inside human body and so on. And as you can see the eye here, we can put even sensors in the eye itself. Uh, we have also other type of classification, direct and indirect. Direct, I convert the physical quantity to the target signal directly. But in direct, I will convert like this example, X-ray to light and then light to electrical signal. Then I have two stages to uh, go through the process. Then direct sensor can convert the non-electrical stimuli into electrical signal directly without the need for any in intermediate stage. And the thermocouple, it is very good example for that. Optical sensors, most of the time, they, they, they go through different uh, or fiber optic based uh, sensors, always used uh, to use different stages to transfer me, to me, the physical stimuli to current. Also, I can, uh, uh, I can classify the signal based on their signal, uh, sensors based on their signal uh, output signal. It is analog or digital. For example, the sensors in the left, this one is thermocouple, it, gen it generates analog signal. What is the importance of knowing is an output is analog or digital? Really, as we said, the processing after that. We need most of processing machines and now they are digital. 
then we will need to convert the signal to digital. Then we, we, we have add-on, we have other burden in my system. But for example, this counter, it is just like wheel and this wheel has holes in it. Then when it rotates like the wheel in the mouse, when it rotates, I cut lights here, then I start to count. We're counting and it is playing. Then the output of this sensor is digital. It is one and zero. And remember, eight is not digital. One and zero is digital, okay? I can classify them on a sensor based on the our proximity or physical contact. Proximity and the physical contact really these very important features. Uh, feature. Uh, personally, I prefer proximity in many applications because there is no direct interaction. There is no movement, uh, parts to move in the sensor. This give the sensor long life. Uh, but phys physical contact, because we have some parts that will be squeezed and so on. So most of the time we have a limited lifetime for mechanical sensor. But sometimes if the place is very dusty and so on, as you see in this example, maybe sensor will be covered by dust. Then sensor will not be able to give me uh, the right function for long time. Or for example, like uh, if you remember the, the dot matrix printer, dot matrix printer, some, some of them, they were using optical sensor to know the position of the head, if it is uh, at the end of the, it's a trip or not. Uh, most of the time, the toner, the powder was going there, and after a while, you find this sensor is not working anymore. Another video, very quick video, and this really showing you the advantage and the how proximity sensors are working. We have uh, here about three minutes. We can see them. Sensors of various types help us in everything we do and consume. Inductive proximity sensors are used in elevators, for example. So uh, we are uh, not getting the voice, the sound is not coming of this audio, this video sound is not coming. Okay. Yeah, now you can play, sir, because you are muted, that's why we are not you getting can hear now. Yeah, now it is getting. Sir. Inductive proximity sensors are used in elevators, for example. Capacitive proximity sensors are used to detect liquids and other dielectric materials on the manufacturing floor. And photoelectric sensors are used in our homes and in countless other applications. Let's take a closer look at how these three common types of sensors work. Inductive sensors can detect a target from 0.5 millimeters to 40 millimeters. They only detect metallic targets and therefore use a magnetic field to detect its presence. When a ferrous metal material enters the magnetic field, electrical currents known as eddy currents are induced on the metal surface. These eddy currents induce a power loss within the oscillator circuit and in turn cause a reduction in the amplitude of the oscillations. This is known as the echo or eddy current killed oscillator principle. This change in amplitude sends a signal to the switch, changing it to its normally open or normally closed configuration, respectively. When the metal target is removed from the sensor's range, the oscillator will return to its normal amplitude and the switch will return to its normally open or closed output. Capacitive proximity sensors, on the other hand, can detect dielectric materials such as liquids, plastic, glass, wood, and granulated substances as long as it has a dielectric constant 
of 1.2 or more. Their range is from 3 millimeters to 15 millimeters, depending on the dielectric material to be detected. Two small plates located in the front of the sensor form a capacitor. As a target enters the sensor's range, the capacitance of the two plates increases, thus causing a change in the oscillator frequency, which also activates the sensor's output, either normally open or normally closed, respectively. In this example, if liquid is detected in the milk carton, the pusher device allows the milk to pass through. If no contents are detected, the pusher device rejects it and sends it to a different location. Photoelectric sensors have the greatest detection range from one millimeter to 25 meters or more. They operate by the use of an emitter, which transmits a beam of light to the receiver. When the light is normally being received, it is known as a dark operated mode. When the absence of light is required, it is known as light operated mode. In this dark operated mode example, the beam of light is being received by the garage door receiver. When a target enters the beam of light, it activates the switch, which will stop the garage door from closing. Conversely, in this light operated mode example, the absence of light being received by the receiver is normal. When the object is removed from the table, the switch is triggered and the alarm will sound. Uh, as you see, uh, as you have seen in this video, how to use contactless video uh, sensors. And the contactless, contactless sensors really they have many applications and uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, I prefer to go to proximity or contactless sensors in many applications to reduce the uh, maintenance, required maintenance and so on. Then to select the sensor now, how to select the sensor, I need to see what is the characteristics of the sensors like accuracy, precision, sensitivity, range, stability, repeatability, and the resolution, uh, and to, to see which, which of these characteristics is suitable for my uh, application or my system. When I go to high accuracy, sometimes I go to high accuracy more than my system needs, or high precision more than my system needs, then I, I need to be careful about these points. If I'm talking about accuracy, as you see in the graph, showing us the accuracy, exactly what is the meaning of accuracy, and it is the maximum difference that will, uh, that will exist between the actual value and the indicated value by my sensor. Okay? Uh, precision, it is uh, reproducibility. It's in, based on our measurements, we have precision. I, I, I take reading for the same quantity and it give me different types, different reading every, every time. Then uh, how to reproduce this signal again. Sensitivity, and it is based on minimum amount of physical quantity than that can carry it output or change in the sensor output. Then you can see here this system, this system with higher sensitivity, with this amount of a change, I will have this amount of it output change here. But this sensor needs more change to have almost the same amount of change in the output sector. Range. Sensor range is very important. For example, if you're going to this graph, you can see the range for to measure temperature. Thermos, thermistors are very good in low temperature. But when I want to go to high temperature, I need thermocouple. Medium temperature, RTD. Then some sensor, sensors, they have range. They perform better in certain range. Also the same like acoustic waves or acoustic signals. It is based also in range. We need to be sure when we select the sensor, we select the right range. The right range by meaning of 
uh, some sensors, uh, if I'm saying I need sensor to work in range of five meters, uh, does not mean when I bring a sensor work on five kilometers, it's a range of five kilometers, it will be better. No, this maybe will give me negative effect. It describes the time of the sensor to give the same output. Then this sensor, for example, will take longer time until giving me the right reading. This longer time also, uh, but here uh, uh, it, it, I have much better uh, performance for sensor. Repeatability, because many sensors really need, due to quality, due to many reasons, they don't give me the same reading for the same physical quantity every time. When you switch off and switch on, you find the different reading. The switch off on, you find the different reading. Then we need to do to read and uh, to know, to know exactly what is the repeatability uh, quality. And how can I know this information? All of this information it will be available in the data sheet. Sensor data sheet resolution and the resolution it is based on as you see here this system has ideal resolution with every change in the input signal i will have a change in the output signal but in reality not all systems are like that some systems like this one this change in input signal will not have any corresponding change in the as output signal you will find the physical quantity changing, but there is no response here. This very this considered a very good resolution because the step is very small, but here I have very big resolution. Just a quick example for sensors. We have the CCD sensor in camera, and this sensor in camera really uh, acquires the image. Then image for us guys, some people say consider image is not our field as engineer, maybe computing, you know, for image is a signal as a, at the end. We can work uh, on it. And really for mechanical applications, images are very important. Imagine production line. If you want to, come to, to if you want to, to uh, uh, monitor products in production line, you need several sensors to measure height, to measure width, to measure speed, to measure many things in the, in, the, in the product. But if you are putting a camera, you can separate your object and by image processing and the video processing, you can measure, take all of these me measurements. And then by one sensor, you can do the function of 10 sensors. As we have seen in the video, we have a uh, proximity sensor. I can detect if the uh, safety seal is there, if the sticker in the product or not, and if the sticker not shifted or something like that. Then we have many, many applications for uh, in production lines for sensors. Here you can see sensors of proximity, also optical proximity sensor can be used to know uh, multiple objects at the same time. We can, know, we can uh, see the level, we can see the features of the product, if there is uh, the label in the product or not. Detection web materials, if the material is as right in, in right density or not. Uh, I have the, 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 my bottle filled with liquid or not and at the end I can reject any product uh, uh, I feel it does not have the required quality from a sticker, a logo or a sticker on the product or from uh, uh, a quantity of liquid or quantity of uh, final product inside the box. Also in vehicles, as we said before, we can use sensors to detect the distance between cars to alert drivers. We also for uh, autonomous cars, it can be uh, used for roads. Also uh, heart bit and uh, for, for uh, this new technique to detect if the driver is drunk or not, they measure the atmosphere around the driver in the car, then they can know 
if he is drunk or not from his breath. His breath. Then his breath will be covering the car. Then I can know if he has any issue about this or not. Uh, so we are using sensors every day. A smartwatch can can collect them. They have some sensors in the smartwatch. You can collect information about your body and then be analyzed and give you the result. Or maybe uh, analyzed and like I have seen accident, accident for someone fall down in uh, in forest and uh, uh, the watch send signal to police or emergency that this person fall down and does not move, he does not move for uh, about five minutes now. Then uh, emergency came to him. We are using sensors for fingerprint sensor to open our mobile phone or face recognition sensor also to, uh, to open our phone. As you see, sensing is the first step. We have a lot of processing after that. Then here, camera is a sensor, will acquire information from about the face and then by calculations and uh, with processing, I can take action after that. Ultrasonic sensor. Uh, here I want to show you how to use sensor, the same sensor in different application. Then this sensor, I can use it here to measure if we have the dynamic change in diameter. We, we measure the diameter based on this sensor. Here we are measuring the distance, how much is this paper or this textile clothes going down. Here I can measure height with the same sensor. Here I can measure liquid level inside tank with the same sensor. Here I can use the same sensor to count, count the number of products. And then here you can see one sensor can be used for different applications. Also, I can use different sensors for the same application. Like for example, I can use here optical sensor to know the level of liquid inside tank. Also, I can use pressure sensor. Which one I will use, it is based on my application, based on the, the liquid, nature of liquid, okay? Here example, other example for how in production line, I can use sensor to see markers and I can cut the product to plates. Here can I detect the car in, based on optical sensor or I can count people or in, in shops, you find this in many shops. So when someone goes in shop, you it give like a alarm. And here can I can know the role if it is going to the end to I need to change the role or not. Uh, this very important part, guys, uh, and this last bit in our presentation. Uh, fiber optic can be used as a sensor. Uh, fiber optic cables, they are very important in mechanical application. Applications, why? In mechanical application, always we have vibrations, we have many things uh, moving, many parts moving. The advantage of using fiber optic cables is that they are dielectric, they are insulator. The, the fiber optic cable is itself it's an, an insulator. Then it will not generate sparks, it will not generate arcs. For, for safety, it is very important. In aeroplanes, uh, one of the aeroplane fall down due to this cable, the electrical cable, there, wa there was some fraction between two cables and at the end uh, generated arcs and uh, fire started in the aeroplane and unfortunately all people killed in this aeroplane. Uh, now in aeroplanes, they are trying to use fiber optics in all communication as much as, as, as they can inside the aeroplane like connecting the, the seats, TV seats, uh, the, uh, by fiber optic cables and so on. Not for any characteristics of fiber optic cable. We have many advantage of using fiber optic cables, but the, the most important point for them, it was safety. Uh, if you can see here, I can, I can detect, I can put material and the center light and the light goes through material and I receive it on the other side and based on analyzing the, this signal, compared to the original signal, I can know some features of this material. 
or I can send the liquid uh, uh, light and it will be reflected. And then I can know, uh, I can analyze the signal as well. I will show you simple applications. For example, in this application, we can use, uh, we bring this plate and with these bubbles on it and we put the fiber optic cable here. Then we will send the light through this cable and I will put here uh, uh, metal, stri two metal strips from different materials. Then when temperature it goes, uh, increases, uh, each, each material or each metal will extend or will expand with different size. Then we'll put pressure in this plate. This will lead to bending in uh, some bendings in fiber optic cables. So with all of these bendings, I will have losses, output losses coming from the cable. Based on amount of losses, I can know the temperature. Also, I can use it for pressure. I can use this for pressure or uh, to measure pressure or weight. Then if I'm putting weight here, also it will bend and based on the amount of losses, light losses, I can know the, uh, the, the, the weight. I can determine the weight. And as you see, we are using the light. There is no electrical signal at all here. And this for safety is very important. Uh, other simple application, I uh, have source of light here, a laser, I'm us using laser beam. I will transmit laser beam inside the cable. And based on the temperature of the cable, I will have some backscattered light. Backscattered light happens due to with different values in, in, uh, based on the temperature. Then I can, by, uh, by, by, re by acquiring this information, I can know the temperature or maybe a strain. For example, if I have long fence around the place, it is hard to put sensors, 100 sensor or 1,000 1, sensor over the fence to know if someone trying to go through the, the, the fence or not then it is better to put wire like this one. And with anyone trying to uh, go through the, the fence will make some vibrations. This will affect the back scattered light. Then I can know uh, if someone trying to go through the fence or not. Really, we can go for uh, lectures, not one lecture, for lectures for fiber optic sensors. Then how can I select the sensor? Uh, Sensor is very important to be able to build a system or a smart system. As we said, we need to acquire information to be able to take the right decision. We have several consideration to select a sensor, like for example, the quantity to be measured. We need to determine what we, what we want to measure. I don't like again, sorry, I will repeat it. I want to like again to say I have temperature sensor and the pressure sensors. I want to and I want to start a project. No, I want to see what I want to, to measure exactly. Uh, which transducer principle suitable for me? For example, if my uh, my my system based on, my sensor based on induct induction and I put the sensor inside electromagnetic field, then it will be affected. I will have a lot of noise in, 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 uh, in my system. Uh, cost, cost is very important factor. It is very important factor and our role as engineers, we need to have, it is, it is trade off between accuracy and our, our resolution or sensor quality and cost. But what is the suitable resolution? What is the suitable sensor quality for my application? I can use a simple counter optical transmitter receiver system for two, three pounds to count the people going inside the place. And I can use camera with image processing and the video processing, processing the sensor to count the number of people. It cost me 5,000 pounds. Maybe the first one suitable for shop, but second one, is not bad, but suitable for bank, it will be used in bank. Uh, performance, like resolution, accuracy, and so on. This one of the important parameter. And the effect of environment, really, we need to consider it. We start to build the system now, and after a few months, I find my system collapsing part by part. Then we need to be sure about the, the, this, the, the nature of, of the sensor will work with the environment, the current environment or not. 
uh, thank you very much. I tried to go quickly through uh, the presentation and really I hope this to be a start for more collaboration in the future. Uh, and just in this slide, in the last slide, I want to tell you we just started from a few days a new society, we call it a smart and intelligent system society. I am inviting all of you really to join it. It is society to exchange information, to exchange information, technical information, and also to exchange information like opportunities for scholarships to study uh, BHD or master degree or for placement or for internship and so on. I hope the lecture, it was useful for you and uh, looking forward to hear, to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, wonderful uh, session on, uh, on this topic, sensors and uh, mechanical applications. It was very good. So actually after this, in this symposia, what we have after this session, we have some small uh, panel discussions. So in this, I'm uh, Dr. Sayyid Mujahid Husseini, one of the panelists. And along with me, uh, Fazal Muhammad, he's also there, one of the panelists. So just we, we used to clarify a few things from our uh, uh, participants as well as, well as our uh, some doubts. So here, because I, I got the opportunity to just ask you because you you are discussed about uh, sensors. So I come to know a lot of sensors, different types, different applications. It's uh, very good. So just in recent times, so during lockdown, there is a lot of uh, industries and a lot of companies are closed down for some time. So after that, mm -hmm. when they open, when they start up, uh, come back to their operations, maybe one month uh, in somewhere in four weeks, somewhere five weeks, or maybe even more. It, it, it is happening everywhere in the world. So in this, especially in India and in, in our subcontinent, we observe. So when after industries are reopened, so whatever the equipment they used to use, machines and equipment, so in that, uh, uh, there is some kind of sensor failures are happened. So especially if uh, in, in India, in uh, Vizag, one of our uh, plastic manufacturing factory, uh, there is uh, some pre uh, pressure sensor was not working because of that, the, whatever the harmful gases of uh, uh, polyethylene that was leaked into the atmosphere and it has affected a lot. Uh, I think few people have lost their lives, even, even few people are uh, de uh, deceased, uh, few people are uh, affected, their, their health is uh, uh, deteriorated. So can you focus something on this, sir? I, I, even uh, not only this one, even one more accident has happened in Pakistan. So just one day before the Eid, when uh, the, uh, the flight is landing, so at that time it is collapsed, right? So I come to know through the media that this has happened because of uh, the failure of sensors. So during this closed down period, because the equipment mm -hmm. machines are not used and sensors are not uh, detected properly, uh, can you focus some light on that, sir, so that in future we can avoid this kind of uh, accident? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, really, I, uh, this very important issue, and maybe you notice this, it was last point in our presentation when we have spoken about environmental uh, issues, uh, effect of environment. But when we close the place for a longer time, based on the environment in this place, for example, if it is dusty place, for example, I visited India before, I went to area in, in north of India called the Panipat. Yeah. Uh, and I went to factory there and I found the factory, it was closed at this time. I found they are covering all machines with plastic bags. And when I asked, the, I, and I noticed this after that, they told me the area is very dusty. A lot of dust coming to this area. Then we cover the machine to avoid any dust to go inside. And I found the, really the plastic cover covered with dust. Then if you are talking, for example, about uh, optical sensor, an optical sensor it is based on transmitting light and receiving it from other side or reflecting and going back. Then if I'm leaving the factory closed for one, two, three weeks without any work, without any work running there, maybe some dust will cover this sensor. This symbol, this symbol uh, problem, then we need to clean this type of these sensors in this case. And in some cases, it is more uh, serious. Maybe the sensor itself will be damaged because maybe some areas, like for example, I remember in factory in Alexandria, Egypt, in, uh, in most of Egypt, it, it was in the sea. It is very humid there. Then the corrosion started to, 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 to affect some sensor performance. Uh, then first thing before, if I'm closing a factory or closing or not using the device for longer time, I need to see 
what is the storage uh, di directions to store uh, this product uh, safely. Uh, second point, when I go back to start to work, I need to test every, all parts of the system. Okay, sir. Means uh, uh, people has to do the reconditioning or maybe servicing of the equipment before starting, after uh, if they close down for a few weeks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank, th uh, thank you very much, sir. And one yeah. more thing, because uh, we, because in our college, we are very much active in our research, especially on uh, heating, yeah. ventilation, and air conditioning, as well as uh, other areas also, because our strength is HVAC. So in this, uh, especially this HVAC we're using for uh, monitoring the environment where we are living. So in our closed rooms or maybe uh, offices. So there we need yeah. to maintain our uh, air purity, air uh, temperature, pressure, as well as uh, yes. uh, the wind motion. So for this, we need to have any kind of sensor so that automatically we can maintain, without any in manual intervention, we can maintain a proper conditions uh, in offices as well as in because in COVID nine post COVID nineteen in especially in medical case medical uh, conditions is uh, deteriorating even on germs yes. uh, viruses are coming can uh, any sensors is there which can uh, which can which can try to decrease or maybe control the atmosphere sir yes sure uh, uh, but I want to only to correct an uh, important point because we always we feel sensor control the sensor enhance you know, sensor does not do anything the sensor only not does not do anything you know, sensor does not enhance the environment sensor give me information about the environment inside the place and then my role now to build a system to enhance the environment inside the place like for example in united nation in the in usa they found the people going ill every in, in, in very high rate and they did not know what is the reason and after the studies, they found a lot of fungus, a lot of fungus inside the uh, ventilation system. Because it is closed the loop uh, air conditioning, then really it was spreading uh, disease inside the place. Then the, the point is to, put to, to select the right sensors. Then we need to select, for example, I, am, I have building now, and I want to be sure about the environment. The environment could be one temperature, two, uh, and this is very important: is the percentage of gas, gases like uh, CO2, like oxygen. Uh, and I put the required sensors. Then I will acquire this information. I will process it. Any result outside the range, for example, like germs, like. Uh, uh, like oxygen level, for example. If oxygen level going under the limit, under the required limit, then I can, for example, uh, open window, or if I can have some ventilation system to uh, suck some uh, natural air from outside to push it inside the building. With COVID-19, we have a very big issue really here because uh, many people worried about using air conditioner because, for example, if I have, if I am carrying you now the virus and going inside the room and you have air conditioner working, it will take the virus from me and the virus will go to the filter. Due to the filter is cold and you'll find it a little bit uh, wet because it is cold. It is good environment for virus to, to grow there. And all of the days, the air conditioner will, will spread the virus inside the place. There is no study about it, but this is what scientists highlighted. It is very dangerous. But as you said, it is, yes, it is very important to, uh, to, to monitor uh, the environment by using the suitable sensors. Then what exactly I want to measure, temperature, uh, uh, maybe... Uh, humidity inside the place if humidity going very high this is good environment for virus uh, if uh, oh, uh, oh, gases level like co2 oxygen and so on and the best on this i can now build my system to control uh, the environment inside the building Okay, th thank you very much uh, for your, uh, just one last question because this is my personal yeah. uh, question. Actually, recently after COVID-19, we designed and developed one uh, uh, disinfected tunnel in our, uh, for our college. So that is especially for uh, sanitizing the person, full body sanitization. 
so that is the mechanical structure is uh, done very good it has we prepared well and we made it as a fully automatic with just like automated so if any person really? is come into the tunnel so it has to sense it and it has to disinfect them means it has to uh, impinge the whatever the uh, the sanitizer mm. whatever the sanitizer is there that is in the form of yes. the particles it has to infect so that they can disinfect the persons that is uh, nowadays it is very much affecting so we have done that so fortunately we are mechanical system is working very well but uh, yeah. electronic system especially whatever the sensor we have kept it actually we kept it uh, optical sensors to to one sensor and one emitter so in that yeah. uh, sensor emitter whenever a emitter is there it's always emitting one light beam and sensor is uh, sensing that and it is uh, working the system if anybody is coming yeah. in and breaking that uh, beam then it automatically it will sense and give uh, the whatever the fluid uh, that uh, in uh, infection uh, uh, disinfection uh, fluid can come so now what yeah. happened in our uh, we are working from last few weeks uh, so it was work initially it was working well but after some time i don't know what is happened and our that whatever the sensor system is not working properly so can you yeah. focus some light on that not only for us even somebody who's commercially they working for this kind of thing so which kind of sensors will be best useful in this kind of uh, uh, applications yes uh, really uh... Uh, i want to even you to maybe to contact you to contact me after the lecture to talk about uh, something you now uh, and any colleague in the in the session can can join can can contact me about this there is fund now from the british council for research regarding covid-19 the exactly they are they want the systems like this system you said i have now system it is working uh, but we have some issues in it Yeah. we have some issues need, we need to enhance it we need to do survey in in, in covid-19 which what is the features of covid-19 like for example as we said if, if someone drunk now and then his breath will go will affect the environment around him then we study the characteristics of the air surrounding the air about the person and then we can put the sensor as you said transmitter and the receiver and they will send the light through the between the transmitter and the receiver and the based on if the effect of uh, alcohol then I, this light will be it change, characteristics will be changed okay the same for the virus we are not sure i'm we can, i cannot confirm to be honest i cannot confirm is that if can we do the same with the virus or not but we can we can investigate this and the british council now uh offering fund to be between one of the british universities and one of the world universities uh especially they are th they are focusing in india and uh, in middle east countries far east countries uh, if we, if we can build a system uh, in, to to help in this issue uh, so if you can contact me and send me your email or any other colleague also not it is not uh, it is public it is in public yeah. i will send yeah. you the link from the british council and you can we can start the project maybe we can start the application in this field okay okay Th thank you very much uh, just please share that link when whatever the possible way we can collaborate and we can work especially in covid now, post covid 19 definitely will we look forward to work with you also sir yes i hope that really and i hope this session to be start to for A research collaboration in future definitely we are very happy very happy to collaborate uh, people like you and countries like uk to whatever the problems uh, we are we are facing nowadays i think this is a universal problem uh, same problem is there yes. place and here also we having the similar kind of thing and uh, strength yes. is there we having very good manpower because we have a very good number of students are there with very good uh, knowledge and skills in this and we having good faculties and also you having very good infrastructure and funding so you, definitely if they, we can collaborate together definitely there is a very good uh, re, uh, research outcomes may come out from this sure and i will share this link to you yeah thank you very much sir now i request uh, fazal mohammad to just uh, uh, share few your ideas as well as if you having any questions please ask yes sir good afternoon good afternoon i am fazal mohammad assistant professor mechanical engineering department nawab shah alam khan college of engineering and co chair for this session I have a list of questions uh, with me from my side as well as from the participant but yeah. due to lack of time I would like to select few questions from the participant yeah. so the first question says as uh, we all of know 
uh, know that uh, due to this pandemic, uh, everyone is eagerly waiting for some treatment or vaccines uh, mm. to come. Uh, one of the participant, uh, Kalimullah Hosseini, has asked one question: Is there any possibility of having sensors to detect COVID-19 like viruses in near future? Uh, really, really, I cannot confirm this as a sensor. I think it is not easy. To, it is not easy for me even to answer. But I did not see sensor can detect a virus in air, a virus in general. Uh, but uh, in in in, uh, in 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 testing and analysis, yes, we have we have some types of sensor in medical applications. We have some sensors. But to have sensor to detect the sensor as uh, the, the virus itself, if it is in, in the air or not, I think it is not, it is not easy to find something like that. But it can be we can use other sensors to uh, to detect the virus or not to detect the virus itself. To detect if the person infected with the virus or not, based on uh, 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 some features. Like for example, they are talking about temperature. The temperature, one of the factors, by by uh, using the proximity sensor, I can know from temperature or camera, I can thermal camera, I can know if, the, if I have 100 person in front of me, and by camera, I can take image, and I will find one of the people, or two or three, they have higher temperature, then there is possibility for one of them to be infected with the virus. Cannot guarantee it 100%, because maybe the temperature increased due to something else. But at least this is one of the features. Now they are starting to study what is the effects of uh, COVID-19 uh, virus in human being. Maybe uh, they are trying to see if it is affecting the iris in the eye or if it is affecting the skin nature or something like that. Then they can combine different features together to, be, to confirm if it is uh, COVID-19 or not. If we are based on one characteristics in, in one physical quantity, it is sometimes it is hard to know, to confirm. For example, as we said, temperature could be just a normal cold or something like that. Then now scientists are trying to identify what is all other symptoms, uh, what all other uh, effects or all other stuff will appear in human body. Then by sensor I can detect and uh, recognize what which type of infection this person had. Thank you. Thank you very yes, much, sir. sir. Any other Thank question? You. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One more question yes. uh, from Doctor Nasib Khan. Uh, what are the main dynamic characteristics usually considered in mechatronic application of sensors? Mechatronic really, it is a very big, uh, very big area really. It is uh, mechatronic. I consider it is one of the most important areas in in, uh, in, in engineering because it combines the mechanical sides uh, with electronic side. Then really, uh, we have different different. Always, always uh, any 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 specifications for sensor. It will be based on the application. And uh, if we are saying for characteristics, as we said, uh, we need to start with the application first. What is my application? And the business application, I can determine the sensor characteristics. So for example, if I'm talking about range or about uh, cost or about resolution or about accuracy, all of this link it to uh, uh, my application. And always, uh, like always, uh, one of my students give me this example, and I like his example too much. Uh, if I'm going to going to buy a Rolls Royce car, it is amazing car. I can uh, I can drive it to 240 miles per hour. It is a lot of specification, a lot of good specifications in this car. Even if I can afford it, but when I buy this car just to, to drive it uh, one hour a day. And to drive it, it goes to 240 miles per hour, and I use it for uh, and driving 70 miles per hour. It is exactly as I bet money in something I'm not using. Then really, it is optimization, and this is our role as engineers and in mechatronics, especially this optimization point. It is very important. Or the trade-off. I have accuracy. I have resolution. I have 
I have different features. This, all of these features, uh, I need to match them with, uh, to be suitable for my application. Then if, for example, I'm using a temperature sensor, a temperature, uh, temperature sensor to measure the temperature, no, uh, the room temperature. If I'm measuring the sensor giving me the temperature now is seven, uh, seven, 27 degrees inside the room. Then temperature increased a little bit. So it is 27.001. For me, it is not important information, this 0.001 because I will not feel the difference as human being. Maybe uh, 27.5, 27.28, sorry, 28.5, maybe half degree each time. Then I can go to the to sensor, give me high, very high resolution in, in, inside the room, but it is not, I, I just a bit extra money without, without uh, need, without uh, need for this information then it is very important really to be able to determine the, uh, what is the application requirements and the based on this, we can select the sensor. And as uh, doctor mentioned in, in, in mechatronics really now, it is involved in all, in all of our life, uh, every, uh, everyday life aspects. Then we need to be careful about that. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, One sir. More yeah. One more question is there, sir. Last question yeah. uh, from Mohammed Khasim. Does non-contact thermometer need calibration after prolonged use? Most, uh, most of sensors, they need calibration after use for a uh, longer time. And some of them, need, even they don't need calibration, they need to be replaced. Uh, and this information always coming in the data, sensor data sheet. Some sensors they need calibration after a while. We, we need more uh, trust, uh, trusted source to take the measurement and uh, calibrate our sensors. But now really, the, in many applications, they don't prefer to go to calibration. They just give you lifetime for the sensor. Then when the sensor goes outside the limit, you need to change it. Telling you, you can use this sensor, for example, for uh, 100,000 hours. And after that, you need to replace it. And this is what we call it the predictive, uh, uh, predictive maintenance. In maintenance, uh, if you notice when we buy new machine, always telling us you need to change oil every this amount of hours, working hours. We need to change a belt. We need to change a sensor. We need to change even projector. The projector, we need to change the lamp after, for example, 50,000 hours. Then really now, uh, they are trying, they know the not trend, they're trying not to go for calibration, but because to, uh, sensors in general and technology and the sensor in general and the sensors, especially it's their price is going low and less and less every day. Instead of asking you to calibrate it, they asking you to replace it. Then they give you lifetime for the sensor to be replaced. But yes, many of sensors need calibration. Okay, sir. Thank you. It is a privilege to have a discussion with you. Thank you, you have cleared all the doubts. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, sir. So I, I just I'll conclude this uh, panel discussion with this. Uh, in conclusion remarks, I, I can say that uh, uh, this, uh, whatever the sensors are, that this is the main uh, uh, equipment which is making our life to be uh, very sophisticated. So if you, uh, in mobiles, in uh, cars, in aeroplanes, in everywhere, because of presence of these sensors, and very precision and accurate sensors, our life will become very, very simple and very easy. So with this closing remarks, I thank you very much, sir. So Abed Hamid uh, Soliman to uh, give your valuable uh, presentation and you are spending your valuable time. Now I request to Muhammad uh, uh, Akhil just take the session. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, as we all know, the application engineering is growing like anything. The information and discussion we have had in this session is very useful for me and to the all the participants. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Now I invite. Thanks, it is my pleasure. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now I invite Dr. Zaira Hassan, sir, uh, to have few words and say both of thanks. Thank you, doctor. You Thank elaborate you your much. lecture. You elaborate your lecture regarding the session and uh, like selection of the selection and 
uh, of sensor application a technology layer application layer survey and for example you put the example how to uh, how to manage the energy inside the building and uh, you put the example like the car booking before before leaving your home and open the diggy uh, uh, automatically and even though you also emphasize in that the, the, the diggy is opened by the owner itself not not by the others and driverless car sensor in the mobiles and uh, physical physical principle of sensor physical control sensors and uh, you also elaborate the contact contactless sensor and you elaborate the the direct contact di, 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 dielectric material yes uh, dielectric material for the sensor and uh, accuracy and precision sensitivity sensor sensor range and stability repeatability resolution image in, in signal at, uh, at the end selection of the good or bad bad, uh, bad product that is also the good example we are very much thank you thankful to you doctor you elaborate your lecture in such a manner than the uh, uh, first year student and the final year student even though the faculty members like uh, me and mr rakil also uh, benefited by the sensor in our future thank you very much doctor thank you very much thank you and really it is it was my pleasure really to join you and my honor to join you and i hope to have more future collaboration in future research activities teaching activities maybe exchanging some lectures and so on for yeah. benefits of our students inshallah i will uh, i will keep you in, keep in touch with you inshallah Inshallah. We will, we will be get get benefited by by the council, and we, inshallah, we will try to also join this smart and intelligent system society. Yes, SIA. we are very much Thank glad you. to join that society. Sir, just please share share that information. We will try to join in that. Thank you very Thank much you for very your much. valuable time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Zaira Singh sir, for highlighting the salient points and your valuable words. Uh, thank you, everyone. we have witnessed two very well presented informative sessions